So the state of Texas has introduced a new bill, which flips a huge middle finger to the ATF and the NFA by removing a state level regulation on SBRs. This action by the state of Texas is coming off the heels of the ATF currently putting in place their final rule on pistol braces. That new pistol brace rule treats braced pistols as actual SBRs under the NFA. And right now there are multiple lawsuits going on against the ATF and that rule on braced pistols. And the hope is to stop that rule before it fully goes into effect. There are multiple lawsuits in the state of Texas in federal courts, but recently we had a federal district court judge, Reed O'Connor, in a federal district court in Texas, deny a request to enjoin the final rule on pistol braces. Well, it now appears that Texas is taking matters into their own hands by introducing a bill that removes state laws, which criminalize the unlawful possession, manufacture, and sale of SBRs. This essentially is a Texas SBR freedom bill. Now, before we break down this bill and all the legal implications, I want to thank one of the sponsors of this video, which is Kershaw Knives. Kershaw makes some of the best knives available on the market right now, especially if you're looking for an EDC knife. And just recently, Kershaw dropped their new 2023 line of knives. So you have a new category of knives that you can pick up for your EDC. I carry one every single day for my EDC. They're high quality, durable, and also aesthetically pleasing. So if you're interested, you can go check out Kershaw Knives. And if you use the code 23SCHOLAR20, you can get 20% off of your order and free shipping on orders of $100 or more. Now this Texas SBR Freedom Bill that we're gonna be discussing is known as HB 2705, and it was introduced by Representative Richard Hayes. HB 2705, or the Texas SBR Freedom Bill that I'm calling it is essentially that, makes it so that SBRs and SBSs are legal to possess, manufacture, sell, and transport at a state level in the state of Texas. One of the major aspects of HB 2705 is the fact that it removes the definition of short barreled firearm from the Texas Penal Code. Currently under section 46.01 subsection 10 of the Penal Code in Texas, short barrel firearm means a rifle with a barrel length of less than 16 inches, or a shotgun with a barrel length of less than 18 inches, or any weapon made from a shotgun or rifle if, as altered, it has an overall length of less than 26 inches. So currently that is the definition of a short barreled firearm in the state of Texas. Well, this bill will completely delete that entire definition from the state law so that there is no longer an actual legal definition of an SBR or SBS within the state. But the main impact of this bill is that it's going to amend the current Texas Penal Code, which defines prohibited weapons and also criminalizes the possession of those specific weapons. Currently, Texas law states that a person commits an offense if the person intentionally or knowingly possesses, manufactures, transports, repairs, or sells, one, any of the following items, unless the item is registered in the National Firearms Registration and Transferred Record maintained by the ATF or otherwise not subject to that registration requirement, or unless the item is classified as a curio or relic by the United States Department of Justice. Now the classifications of weapons that are included in that section are A, an explosive weapon, or B, a machine gun, or what prior and currently is in this law, C, a short barreled firearm. What this bill introduced in Texas does is it specifically deletes short barreled firearm from that above prohibition. So that is what it's going to do. It's going to completely delete that section of the law. That means what this bill aims to do is remove the current Texas law, that it is only lawful to possess, manufacture, or sell SBRs and SBSs in Texas if and only if you do so in compliance with the NFA and the ATF's restrictions. Essentially what this bill does is it states that Texas takes no state position on the restriction of SBRs and they will not have a state prohibition or criminalization on those items. This law aims to do something that we saw Texas already do with their suppressor freedom law. That law in the Texas suppressor freedom law was HB 957 that did pass into law and it aimed to essentially exempt from federal regulation all suppressors that are made in and remain in the state of Texas. The law that Texas passed required that suppressors be made in Texas and then also be stamped made in Texas and it also barred all local agencies and entities within the state from enforcing any inconsistent federal laws against Texas residents 
who maybe purchased or made those specific type of items, those suppressors. The claim behind the Texas Suppressor Freedom Law was that since those items were made and sold within the state, they do not fall under interstate commerce and therefore they fall outside of the purview of federal regulation by the ATF. The ATF, of course, did not agree with that Texas law. And currently there are lawsuits and litigation going on in federal district courts in Texas on that very issue. We've talked about that heavily on this channel, which is Paxton v. Dettelbach. That is the lawsuit in regards to made in Texas suppressors. Now, this SBR law is not as broad and as far reaching as the Texas suppressor law. This SBR law simply removes the state SBR definition and removes the state prohibition and criminalization mechanisms that are in the state law. However, it does not also state that law enforcement or state agencies cannot go after someone using something like the NFA or other federal laws. The suppressor freedom law that did pass did have a direct restriction on state agencies and law enforcement officers from enforcing inconsistent federal laws. However, this SBR bill does not do that. Now, as most of you are aware, the NFA makes possession of SBRs and SBS is legal only if a firearm is registered with the ATF and also you must pay that $200 tax stamp. That means that although the state may have essentially removed some of the SBR language from their state level restrictions, there's still going to be that overarching federal law under the NFA that the state itself or maybe even federal agencies can and likely will still prosecute you under. It's important to note that even with all these types of state laws which are getting passed, the ATF has taken the position that despite these state actions, they will still prosecute state residents under federal law and you are still subject to those federal laws. As we saw in Texas after they passed the Suppressive Freedom Law, the ATF sent out a broad reaching letter to all gun stores and to some residents indicating that the ATF would still go after people with made in Texas suppressors and they would apply the NFA and GCA against them. And with that comes some heavy federal penalties. But one thing this bill might do is provide some further protection against the ATF's current treatment of braced pistols as SBRs. Because of this final rule on pistol braces that the ATF has now finalized and will go full into effect at the end of this month, there is an estimated 40 to 100 million firearms that are magically going to become SBRs overnight, essentially. And this puts millions of law-abiding people at risk and millions of likely Texas residents also at risk. If this bill passes, one of the good things it can do is help to prevent gun owners from getting a double dose of criminal penalties because these state laws will essentially be removed. So even though the ATF is magically saying that these brace pistols are SBRs, you wouldn't get criminalized or you wouldn't be penalized under state law because they would remove the SBR definition under state law. However, that person will be still subject to the NFA's strict penalties. They will still be subject to the ATF's new final rule on pistol braces unless it's halted but at least you would remove the state action or the state laws that could be then put against you. This new law in Texas in some ways is symbolic in nature. However, it shows that many states are likely more than willing to resist the ATF and that new rule on pistol braces. I would not be surprised if we see more states adopt some sort of similar law like we've seen Tennessee do with their SBR law and now Texas do with this bill. Uh, but for now, if you're in Texas, don't think that you can just simply jump the gun, that you can just buy SBRs, not register them under federal law. This bill is still making its way through the process. It hasn't even been passed, uh, but it's an interesting idea and it's an interesting move by the state of Texas to oppose the ATF, to oppose their new pistol brace rule, and also take some sort of action while we're still kind of going through the lawsuits in relation to the pistol brace rule. If you guys want to learn more about the important cases in regards to the Supreme Court hearing a case, which is currently before them, they've accepted review of a case, which potentially will do away with current ATF overreach and impact their rules on pistol braces, uh, bump stocks, their frames and receivers rule. If you're interested in learning the, about the case that the Supreme Court is taking, which may do away with Chevron deference, you can watch this video here on the channel. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.